Hi and welcome to this old house. The driveway marker is an easy way to add a dash of white picket fence pizzazz. In just a few hours of weekend work, you can build an attractive marker that'll point the way to your home for years to come. It's a fairly simple project, basically just two short sections of picket fence attached to a sturdy corner post. Before you dive in though, check out the cut list on this webpage to pick up all your materials. And if you want a custom size, that's easy. Just make the rails and pickets longer or shorter to fit your own design. To get started, use your miter saw to cut the pickets down to a rough length. Then, for the angled tops, adjust the blade to 12 degrees and trim off one end of each piece. Now, there's a trick to marking the right length. Lay out eight of your rough cut pickets, using spacers to keep the distance between them even, and line up the angled ends against a straight edge. Then all you have to do is use a straight edge at the other end to mark a line across the bottom of the pickets. Once they're marked, set your miter saw back to 90 degrees and trim each piece. While you're already working at your miter saw, it's a great time to make the two end posts. First, cut a 4x4 down to length. Just keep in mind that depending on the size of your miter saw blade, you may need to cut into each face of the post to get all the way through the material. Once you have both posts cut, set the blade to 45 degrees so you can bevel the tops. Mark each post 3 quarters of an inch from the top, and then clip all four corners to get an even bevel all the way around. Now to make the big decorative center post, you'll need to get a little bit creative with the circular saw. Measure and mark the post, set your circular saw blade to its maximum depth, and make a cross cut on each face of the post. Then you'll have to grab a handsaw to finish the heart of the cut. When it comes time to install the marker, you may want to anchor it with steel rods, and now's the time to drill the holes for them. Mark the bottom of each post with an X to find its center, clamp the post flat on the bench, then use a 3 quarter inch spade bit to drill into that point. Now it's time for the notches. Mark the cut lines and set your circular saw blade to 1.5 inches. Starting at the bottom end of the post, cut along the two vertical lines to create a notch in the back corner of the post. To remove that loose piece, you'll need to go at it with a hammer and chisel. It might take a while to get it out. The bevel at the top of the corner post is the same as the ones on the end post, except it's a little bit bigger. Set the saw blade to 45 degrees and cut the bevel all the way around the post. Probably the most challenging feature on the whole project is the decorative notch on the center post, but it's not as difficult as it may look. Before you start, set the blade depth to match the top bevel. Then, make 45 degree parallel cuts angling in toward each other at the top and bottom boundaries of the notch. Once you get through all four sides, reset the blade to 90 degrees and then adjust the depth to 3 quarters of an inch. Make two straight cuts all the way around that connect with the bevel cuts. To clean out the chunk of material in the middle of the notch, make a bunch of cuts through it on all four sides of the post. Knock out the fins with a hammer and use a chisel to clean up the face of the notch. With all the pieces of your marker made, now it's time to build the frame. First, cut the bottom rails to length. Just keep in mind that one is three quarters of an inch shorter than the other because it will butt into the other at the vertical notch. Stand your posts up on your work surface and use a couple of pickets on edge to set the rail height. Then take the longer rail and butt one end into the notch and use deck screws to attach it to the post. Clamp the other end to the end post and screw it in place. Then for the top rails, set your miter saw back to 12 degrees and trim off one end. Butt the angled end into the top of the notch and screw it in place. Attach the other end where it crosses the end post. Once it's screwed in place, you can use a handsaw to trim the part sticking past the post. Next, you can install the pickets. Use the same spacers you used earlier when marking their cut lines. Working from the back side of the marker, screw through the rails and into the pickets. That way, you won't see the screws from the front. Now to attach the rails on the perpendicular side. They go on the same exact way. The one difference is at the notch, where the rails butt into the ones you just installed. If you're using pressure treated wood like we did, let the whole piece dry for several weeks before applying a good quality water-based primer on all the exposed surfaces. Then you can apply a finished coat of paint. 
When the whole thing is built and painted and you're ready to install your marker, take a length of one half inch steel rod and hammer it into the ground where you want the center post. Then, with a helper, lift the whole piece into place over the post. When you're done, take a step back and enjoy how your new driveway stands out.